Here he goes. That's it. He's That's in. She's in. Going out to a place where I used to drive by the bus every day on the way home from school on the bus. So friends, we're at a place I grew up, out Yellow Point. I used to go by this joint every day. And the Monkmans used to, the Monkmans, they used to drop, they used to drop people off here and we would stay on and go all the way out deep Yellow Point where we lived. But these folks, you know, they moved out and they got firewood they want and they got a big piece of property and they do have root rot here. Actually quite a bit of root rot and they want a couple of monsters down. And, um, it's tight and tall, it, like always, friends, right? So, you don't cut, you can't cut the little one if you can. yeah, I might have to take that little one. It we'll see, no worries. but there's they're, they're down there, friends. You see them, and, and where they're coming is, is up here, up towards the house. And there's a smoke bush that got either broken in snow or something right there, but they want that protected. But unfortunately, it is such a tight squeeze that you'll notice here. What I'll do, is I'll... friends, good morning. Don't worry, it's not going to be a long interjection. But I must say, I do suffer from a, a, a scenario called wanting to do a good job. And it has gotten me in trouble in the past. Not not with people or, or it, with, with either getting hurt <laughs> or, or just I, I want to I want to get everything they want. Like if they say, don't touch this, 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 and that, we want this, then, and, and don't cut that tree down. And, and if it's in the way, well, it is in my way, so I should just cut it up and send it. Well, no, I'll work around it. You want that? I want to do my, I don't know what that's called. It's just wanting to do a good job. Friends, I figured it out. Just re-watching this back. It's high expectations of yourself, which can sometimes get cast upon others. I, but I did figure it out. We got a lot of factors working against us here and I just want to touch in it before I get into the cut and into the show. This is a very interesting video. There's a lot of voiceover. I walk you through so much stuff here. So if you're interested in tree cutting and stump, depth, hinge strength, all this stuff and, and weight and this is a really interesting video, friends. I'm proud of this video and... Uh, not a good one to skip if you're a tree guy. Just to the tree guys, to the those fellas and, and gals. Not a good video to skip because this goes against, again, I am I am unorthodox, but follow along. Enjoy the video. I just wanted to say good morning to you. It's a gorgeous day. The birds are chirping. Enjoy. Go like this, friends. Boop. There. And we got Pavarotti with us today. I got a hankering to run her. She's got a, a pretty hungry grind on her, so I don't know. The wood's pretty big. She may. Hopefully, she won't be grabby. But I have a feeling she's going to be. I got a pretty aggressive grind on that grinder of mine. I got another grinder set up for, for something a little more durable. I'm going to swap it out. So, he's got a big patch of root rot in, in the back here. He's had trees blown over like mad. And, and, and he's been kind of wondering why and that. Well... 
These are the ones that are that are coming. Yeah, okay, good. That actually, that one with the dog leg I was talking to you about, it's staying. So here we are, we're down at the, the trees here. And as we do a 180 degree turn from here, we come to here. There's the house, there's the pro There's the lay of the property. He doesn't want that smoke get bush, bush getting tagged, but I said, you're gonna lose the top of this little fur. You may, you may not. He says, I'm not worried about any of that stuff. He says, I want to save my bush, which already been broken in snow. So they really like that bush tree. So that is what we're gonna attempt to do here. We're gonna, we're gonna do our very best. So I'll go down and assess the stumps and, and, and take a good look at, at what I can do here to keep things moving in a generally good direction. All right, here's the lay right there. We're gonna skin that cedar a little bit in order to save that smoke brush. This guy's probably gonna lose its top. He ain't worried about it one bit. He wants firewood. To hope, hopefully give you folks some idea what I'm up against here. See the tree on the right, the big one? Well, look at the bones on at the top. I go again here. See, look at this. There's a little balsam right there. See that one on the right? It, it, it is actually limb bound with it. But look at the bones. I go in real tight here to show it. Look at the crown. Look at this. There's not one limb on the inside of the tree on the high side. Everything is fighting me hard here. So the way I cut up this tree is interesting. So friends, now that I'm down here, I'm actually looking at where I have to put this thing and it's worse than I thought. I gotta talk to him. Like it's... That little fur's gonna get walloped. That little fir tree, oh, well. like it's gonna get cremated because it. Be. Know the deal. Yeah, you're almost better to cut it down. But if you want to see how it makes out, we can see how it makes out. Let's do that. I just don't want it going uh, towards the house. Even if it did, it wouldn't hurt. So nothing. I start looking at this, and I actually have to send it more than 90 degrees now to get it into that lay, into that little kind of a hole. And if I don't stay to the right, and there's that tree I'm fighting, and I, I could have cut it up, friends. He said it was okay to cut it up, but I'm just not like that. It's just a, it's kind of a dinky little fir tree that goes up and has been thwarted for, for years and years by these big pieces of timber, and it just kind of dwarfs over. I kind of had feelings for it, so I, I, I worked around it. And, and that's another reason why I cut this tree up like I do. Uh, some of it may look unorthodox, but it's, it, trust me, when, it, when you got to bang weight like this, you, you want to try to utilize the, 
the, the weight somehow this tree to try and right. utilize it. And it's not by going right going underneath it. <laughs> this way, okay? But as you look up, you won't see it. All the bones are out back in the forest. Like there's no weight and the wind's pushing back on us. This is where I've, I've talked about this so many times, friends. friends. I've talked about cutting up the wood properly on a tree. Okay. Guys eat up their bottom side. They eat up their bottom side and the tree sits back and goes into the weight. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not good. I want to feed the high wood into the cut. You've heard me talk about this before. You're going to watch me from over here. I'm telling you, I'll bring these. This is, this is not, this is not easy to, to make this decision. It's just not. But if you want to make, if you want to bang your guts out and continue to bang, bang your, guts, your out, guts out, that's up to you. I don't enjoy that. And I don't have a lot of energy to be doing that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go in. We're going to cut her up. We're going to put a cut in her and I'm going to feed it from that side, the high side. Now, before I set you guys up, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about so you can understand what I'm talking about. Look at the limbs. See all the limbs up there? See them? They're all going to the forest. There's nothing coming in my lay. Nothing. And it's, it's, just, it's just what it is. It's all out there. See this? It's all going out to the sun. Okay. So on the stump, it makes a difference what you do. It makes a difference on what you do. And we're going to do that now. Friends, he said I could cut that little fir tree down and just blow it out the back there and get out of the way. And then it would have just made my whole life different cutting that tree. And actually, probably most fellas would have. But not me. I like trees. See that last move friends we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna this is we're gonna get into this video deep okay did you see that last move i just did there like this this cannot be i can't be four feet off three feet off two feet off even a foot honestly i cannot be i can't stress how important your undercuts have to be with depth is important super important depth is and also, uh, like you're opening, everything has to be mathematically right on the money when you're coming for shooting like this. So I'm gonna show you the angle from the front looking in too. Check this, check this out, this last final little move, I changed my direction by like probably a foot.
jumping off the, this is where ground chain is just, it's unbeatable. Like, look at one hand, and it just, I had a one inch Dutchman. That's it, like, it was almost perfect, but I had to clean it up. If I was to go down the bottom right now and, and wipe out all my bottom wood, like bring up my bottom hinge, do, do you know what would happen to the tree? Because right now, say we're step, like just high wood and low wood on the stump. Now if I, if that balsam wasn't there, I swear I could, and well the wind would have got me, but regardless, it's about how much energy I'm gonna have to exert, especially with a bad wing, beat this thing over. I know there's going to be some coercion needed, but there wouldn't have been much if that balsam hadn't have been there. And it's because of the reason of, of how I cut it up. I pour, I call it pouring. I've, I've talked about this before. So all the weight is on the low side. I'm on the high side of the tree, friends, right now. And I'm feeding that high wood into the hinge. So what's happening is all that weight on the low side right now is falling in. Friends, I need to talk you through this. This thing pinches me, and I'm wondering why. Watch this. It starts grabbing me really hard. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, how can this be? Like, what, what, why is it grabbing me? There's no, there's no reason for it. I'm nowhere near, watch. So I go around. I'm like, what, what, what's happening here? I'm like, okay, looks good. But I don't realize there's a little piece of wood that I missed right up against that tree because I don't want to bark and cut that little tree up. So I start wedging. So I'm digging for wedges. This is actually very interesting and funny. But did you see that, that tree grab me? So I'm thinking, it's sitting right now. I better get wedges in. But I'm actually quite surprised. It's boggling me a little bit. So... Just watch what happens here, friends. This is very, very interesting. Note that that tree started to pinch me. Did, did you hear it? It, it? it started to grab my bar, and I'm like, no, this, this, is, this can't be happening. Something's not right. I misjudged my lean, and I'm thinking, no way. So here we go. Check this out. I'm banging, setting up. Don't need much. Just need, just need enough to, to set it up. And I'm like, oh, I go to put my wedge and I'm like, oh, look at that. <laughs> there's no, I, there's a piece of wood. Now, friends, this is where I'm telling you, bore cuts are, if anybody's going to say, oh, you should have, no, the bore cut is not a, a, a program here. Not when you're trying to feed wood. You can't feed anything with a back strap. So this essentially is a back strap. I do not want that there. Watch what happens. This is crazy right here. Watch. I snip it. Okay? I just snipped it. Now, can you imagine what all that weight on that backside does? Now, check this out. Look at me go. I'm flying now. I'm able to cut, rock and roll, no pinch, nothing. I look up, I'm like, okay, is this thing moving? Because the pinch is gone, friends. Check this out. I, I'm, I'm voicing over friends because this was quite a job and it, it I had a plan and I, I pulled it right off. I'm talking to you guys about right now just that I forgot of that little piece of wood. So this is just an experiment with this voiceover friends. I, I just, 
this was a big now this here is where we start to move that i cut that back strap which i totally missed this thing starts moving now i've got a wind blowing against me now as i start moving this what i'm doing is pushing that weight on the low side which is the left side of the tree i'm pushing that weight now into the undercut okay so you're not going to do that from the low side friends you're just not and especially with that strap so here we go let's get this thing moving So we set this up. I shouldn't, I, I wasn't planning on banging wedges, but we do. That one's pretty near sunk. And I'm thinking, okay, sweet. We got nice wedgemanship going on here. Now I go back up and I'm thinking, I gotta grab my saw and now go cut some of this lower wood because there's a whole pile of it here. You see what's going on? So, so do, do you folks understand what I'm doing? I'm pushing the lower weight into that undercut. And I can't stress this enough. If I was to go eat all that lower wood, friends, you would barely be able to put a freaking uh, wedge into that thing with all that weight underneath. Friends, please understand what I'm trying to tell you right here. Look at the sights. Use your sights on your back cuts when you're lining up your hinges. See, see, look up now. Watch what happens when I go up. I'm pointing at the line. Follow the line. It'll go on the low side of the timber. See that? We're not there yet. We're building hinge. So I pull out. Go around the bottom. You notice that I was almost there, but I'm gonna make sure I just join in now. So this is this is where the bottom wood gets eaten up now. So I chose to leave my bottom at almost opposite to sometimes what we what we do depending on on it's situational. Here I needed to lift and drop weight in to try and push it. See, look at this. So if I had a strap back there, remember how it was holding me? We already been there, we're not going back there. Now I start finding my way. This is a very sharp chain. It's, it's almost double cutty. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, aggressive. But anyways, I'm looking up. I'm eating low wood now. See? So, but guess what? We got wedges pounded, it can't go back. I'm actually hoping it will walk, start to walk now because I've got that, that weight kind of lifted and moving downhill. But friends, with that little wind popping back on there, now that balsam limb, or that big fur limb is into that balsam limb now. Like it's, it's, it's in the tree. When this tree leaves, I want you folks to watch that balsam beside it on the left side of the screen. You, you watch the balsam, it bends right over and then all of a sudden goes, ting. So we're creating this hinge. We're getting through, we're eating up this bottom wood. See, we're gonna bu build that hinge and then go back up. But we do have to coerce this tree. All right, that's it. This last bit of cut, this, this, I, I'm done here. This post is, is, is built. It's sitting on that post of a foundation. There's probably three inches of wood there. The more you take, the more it sits. Found, Listen, friends, compression and tension are completely different animals. And, and sometimes pulling all your bottom wood out is not smart. Now you're, you're putting all the tension on this top wood. And friends, notice how much wood I cut up on top to get this thing to roll. It's crazy. And it stays on target.
So with the hinge built, we got a little bit more Dyson we can do, but we are up against that balsam now with the limb. And we just draw up our hinge here so we know we're cut up. Take a peek, is there any movement? We are definitely against that balsam and the wind's on us now. So it's just about coercion now. Friends, think about that little piece of wood I've got there on the high side. Look how cut up we are on the high side, which is the tension side. And yet, it's still just hanging in there beautifully. Wedge placement and low wood. So here's this balsam I keep talking about. Look at it, it's bent right over. Look at the curve in it. That's because there's a limb up there that's grabbed it like a while ago, friends. And I've been actually trying to nurse that over and break that top off. Okay, friends, so you can probably imagine how bad this thing's leaning back and down with the wind. This thing, if you get a glimpse, actually, I'm going to show you a glimpse. Watch what happens. I'm going to change views right now. I'm up against the balsam limb. It, I'm, I'm already against the tree. So I'm actually limb bound now, trying to break the top off of that balsam. Watch this. I'll switch views. All right, take a look around. Check out the wind. It's blowing back on me on a 150 foot fur, going hard down the hill. And I'm lifting, but I'm lifting. Wedge placement is a lot. It means a lot in these scenarios. I'm trying to get on top of the weight. Sometimes getting underneath the weight is smart. It is, it's smart. But friends, I'm telling you, when you build a proper hinge, you, you, wait till you see what happens here. I'm up against that balsam to my left. See it there? Watch what happens when this tree starts to go. I'm just gonna hang around with you on the voiceover. There's no point. That I, I want you to understand what's actually going on here. I am not happy about banging these wedges right now. I'll tell you quite frankly, and you guys know why. I haven't swung an axe in three and a half months. So check this out. I'm on the balsam. Watch that balsam. This tree leaves. It's it's ready to go. Look at this. Tap, tap. The tree's leaving. Watch that left tree go with the big fur. There it goes. It's leaving. Boink right into lay like right in to lay I'm very pleased right now like very pleased friends watch the balsam top again to the left right there see it poof lands on the ground on the left over there <laughs> show you why this was imperative why I left the stump like this I'm surprised I've even okay so if I had a listen to what I'm saying friends if I had a gone downstairs and took all that lower wood first this would have been twice as hard to bang do you guys understand what I'm saying I'm not I can't bang a wedge right now to save my life because of my shoulder if I had gone down there and took all that small wood, that lower wood first, I'd have been struggling big time. Big time. Check this out. So we're actually right on target. Yeah, see, see if I had to went any further, up, up the, up the middle of the lane. Yeah. You would have been. You'd say goodbye to that smoke bush. Look at those limbs. Yeah. Perfect. Like seriously, that's that's why I took my time. That thing, and I knew we'd skin the cedar. Oh, yeah. 
We knew that. Yeah, we knew that. And we knew that that, you know what? That thing made out pretty good. Yeah, a teeny little toff out of her. Yeah, big deal. It'll grow back. And I saved that little one for you, friends. This could not have come better, honestly, for what they wanted and asked for. Look at, look at that thing. That's a big freaking tree. All these limbs, every single well, one of them well, was well, on the well. lower side. Yeah. yeah. That thing fought me hard, and the wind was blowing against me. Yeah, you got a light wind out of the north. Did you see that? This is what they wanted to save right here. Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's and, and look at tree. that limb, friends. Look at that. Look at the limbs. No. So literally, if I had to put that tree any closer down the center lane, we'd have destroyed that thing. Yeah. We would have just we would have smashed it all to heck. Well, what about this other one? Is it going to go right next door? It's going right on the same line. It's going to smash all those limbs off for you. Okay, I was going to go grab my saw and buck them off. But no, no, don't. Just don't worry about it. No. So, I was not planning on banging wedges. It was not in my thought process. And when I got there and we walked around and I looked at that, I was like, oh, man. So, I always try and utilize the lean. Basically, that's what I try to do is utilize nature instead of going against the flow of nature. There's all kinds of ways you could have cut that tree up. You could have went down there and, and, and bored in the, in the bottom, right? Bo bored in the bottom, right? And pounded wedges, like pounded. But now, now think about this now. Now you got a wedge in there because what... Where would, right, you'd have, so what if you need to cut more wood from the high side? Now you got this wedge poking out in there and just, I I just push the weight. I, I try to utilize, that balsam, that balsam destroyed me. That little balsam that I snapped the top out of. So did, did you see the top go snapping out the side? That was in me a long time ago. Friends, that tree would have walked up there without that, that big fur limb hanging into that balsam limb. It just would have been beautiful. I actually, to be honest with you, because if you think about it, all I did was once I snapped that little piece of wood off that strap, that little teeny wedge just sunk. Now I got control. It's mine. It's my tree now. You see, so uh, I just I I I'd done lots of this stuff, and I love I love the challenge. But and once it was time to bang those two wedges side by side. And, and again, it's a three pound ax. That's my old fallen ax. We said we were gonna get it out and we did. But really, a heavier ax would have been nice and, and, and another arm would have been lovely for that job. <laughs> but you make do because the desire is worse or better than not doing it at all. That's gotten me in trouble in my life. I love you people. I hope this made sense. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It makes sense to me. Work hard, be honest, and be kind. Thanks for watching. BuckandBillyRay.com for any of your shoits, your patches, your ball caps. Christine's got a wicked freaking ball cap. I should actually throw a little picture in to give you a peeksie poo of what's going on, what we're making right now. It's kind of an old school logo with a nice leather patch on a hat. You know what I'm saying? Ripsaw. I'll leave the freaking whoosh in the, whatever you call it down there, the, the description. And just have yourself a wonderful day. I always feel better when I work, friends. Always. Just... That's what happens when you got berries on you. <laughs> I love you.